Meanwhile, a judge has sentenced the husband and wife charged in connection to former subway spokesman Jared Fogle. Yeah, the couple was accused of child exploita exploitation and producing pornography involving several girls. CBS 4's Russ McQuaid was in the courtroom when the survivors took the stand against Russell Taylor and Angela Baldwin. Considering the crimes were committed between 2011 and 2014, many of these survivors have waited a decade or more to tell their stories. Jared Fogle and Russell Taylor were tight for several years. Taylor ran Fogle's charity foundation, but the subway pitch man also shared an interest in child pornography and child sex exploitation with his married friends. Taylor's original 27-year sentence on child pornography charges was overturned due to ineffective counsel. But today, federal judge Tanya Walton Prant sentenced him to another 27 years, with seven of those years already served, for sex exploitation of a minor and various child pornography charges. For the first time, the survivors of abuse faced Taylor in public and told him in court, quote, you had no right to do this to me or any of the other children. If it wasn't for this, my whole life would be different. And I'm really bitter. I'm a meaner person. Taylor told the women he was, quote, disgusted by his own actions and he couldn't, quote, take back the decisions to install the cameras that were in his house to secretly videotape the girls. Judge Pratt's sentence for Taylor's former wife, Angela Baldwin, was even more harsh, more than 33 years. As the court found, despite her claim that she was under Taylor's influence, she molested her own relatives on her own and was gleeful about it, and then destroyed evidence and sought to convince the victims to lie to investigators. This sentence was imposed because of a pattern of per persistent conduct. This was someone who chose to do this, this was someone who wanted to do this, and it's as horrific an exploitation of children who should be able to trust you. Some of the survivors I spoke with inside the courtroom and out in the hallway told me that this hearing gave them a sense of empowerment, that now they have seized back control of their stories from their abusers. At the federal courthouse, Russ McQuaid, CBS 4 News.